Hey, hello everybody. This is a short video for those of you that want to be involved in the robotics and automation for Skills USA. Wanted to make this so that you can see the type of equipment that's necessary in order to be competitive in this uh, uh, two-stage contest. <clears throat> the two stages would be the actual robot contest itself to manipulate the cubes in the various activities that you're asked. Also, in programming a, a PLC controller, in which case then it is the uh, logo from Siemens, and that is the would be your, your automation part of the contest. So let me just show you those components. So right now you're looking at the Scorebot ER4U robot, and that's the mainstay of this contest. Uh, it is programmable using the software that's provided by IntelliTech. Uh, it's also helpful to have the simulator version of it setting up a contest space using cell setup and then that interacts with the software that drives the, uh, uh, the score bot. Next, you're going to have what's called a feeder station this feeder station now is a what they would call gravity feeder and you need to get yourself an assortment of cubes that would be both metal and plastic. And we'll talk about these here a little bit because I have uh, some other cubes that I have sitting here next to me that we'll talk about those types of uh, things that go along with that. Moving to the back, the control panel for the robot. The unit looks like that, and you need to have the hand pendulum, uh, which is sitting on top. That then allows you to record positions of the robot and get it to where you need it to go. And it also controls the speed. Some of the other peripheral devices now. Here is a control box that has two things on it. It has a proximity sensor. This proximity sensor senses whether the cube is plastic or metal and then it has a little push button piece right here that will sense that is your um, to find the condition of a defect in each of the cubes. So let's talk about the cubes that I have here in front of me. These cubes come in two varieties. They come metal and plastic they also come with, there's a little dimple in each one, so there's some that have dimples in metal and there are also ones that have dimples in plastic. So you need a set of both. Uh, you can buy these from IntelliTech, uh, they come in a group of about eight I believe. And then there's what you see in the feeder right now and then these are the spares that I have um, that we can use for them. Let's move towards the back of the panel. You see here now, you have a couple of stations. Number one is the logo. That logo machine is composed of, of two components. It's composed of the main controller right here. And then you should have one additional relay pack in order to be able to have enough control points to be able to do whatever application that you have. I have also a spare 12 volt power supply that I have mounted underneath the table and I bring it up through the top so that I can drive some of the items that uh, need that 12 volt power supply. The IntelliTech controller has a 12 volt output but it's not nearly strong enough to drive uh, either the proximity sensor or the garage door sensor that we have on the conveyor belt. So looking at the control box, this is our warning box that has two things on it. We have a, an e-stop switch, which is an application for remote e-stop. It's a push button switch that has both a normally open and normally closed contact. And then we have a light stack. The one that's used at Nationals has three lights. It has a red, green, and a yellow on it. Really, most of the time we're just using these two. 
the one at Nationals also has a blue light to it, but you know, once you get the hang of energizing a green or a red, the yellow and blue is just peripheral and, and you're good with that. So those are, uh, and in order to control and program the logo, you have to have the software that goes along with that and you get that from the Siemens Corporation. I typically use a local vendor that sells Siemens controls. If you buy them from Intellitech, you'll pay a lot more for it if you just go to the local guy and uh, get the controller from them. There's an educational discount on those. You can get six controllers, six relays, and the software for a thousand bucks, which is a pretty good deal. I have an additional horn and a light on there. This is something that we got donated from Amazon. You don't need that. Uh, I just give it uh, 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 one more idea to be able to, to control, just one more control point. And then the last piece is some kind of peripheral device that to be able to move cubes. Most of these stations come and at nationals they use the conveyor belt conveyor belt can be placed really anywhere on the station but then what you need at the end is uh, some type of device that will give you one more control point to be able to see the cube as it gets to the end of the conveyor to be able to have one more signal to either stop or start the conveyor belt. The other piece that I just picked up which might be less expensive is the rotary table so that could be used in place of the conveyor belt works in the same fashion but doesn't have any of that won't have a, a switch point to be able to have a sensor on top of it so all right well that is all of the component pieces necessary to be competitive at the skills usa contest called robotics and automation.